The roadmap for the wildest ride in our lives is inside us thanks to our DNA. So would you be brave enough to discover where it leads? 12 New Zealanders have, and they're about to find out what really runs in their blood. Our actors Nicole Whippy and Kirk Torrance are about to go back in time and find family connections to pilgrim settlers, clans, and ancient tribes. Wow, okay. I, I don't tell too many people. <laughs> it was way back in England. It was way back. Way they back. were a royal family. Oh, just they were one known more as time. a royal family. <laughs> a royal family. <laughs> See, no mucking around with us. No. By choosing to decode our DNA, we can uncover family connections that have become lost in the mists of time. But the markers in our DNA can reconnect us to that past and newfound relatives all around the world. Actress Nicole Whippy has several twists in her family tree that testing can help to iron out. But before we reveal all that, let's hear what she knows of her family history. My mum is Fijian, New Caledonian, as far as we know. Um, however, if you meet my mother, she um, a lot of people think she's Indian. She looks like a very small Indian woman, um, quite different from me. And an auntie who was dying um, high on morphine told another auntie that my mother's father's father was actually the, the Indian lawn mowing man down the road. Um, so that's <laughs> something um, we're not too sure about. They used to call her father Augustus Genet, Frenchy, Frenchman. If, if it is what we've been told, he is New Caledonian. My mother's grandmother, she had an affair with a New Caledonian man and they actually had to flee with their kids and that's when they went to Fiji. I know that her side of the family completely disowned her. I'm thinking because if this is going through my mother's line that we're going to clear up a lot there that this family just haven't been, my family have not been able to figure out. But then I feel like maybe I'm going to be dealt a curveball, something there that I just <laughs> have no idea about. Yeah, but that's exciting. Nicole, <laughs> welcome to HQ. Oh, thank you for having Sit me. Sit yourself <laughs> down and let's hear all about yourself. I, I hear you've just had a, a newborn? I have, Boy six girl. months now, a little girl. Oh, bless. Yeah, Vida. This Whippy name that you have, I, I gather you have an ancestor, David Whippy, who was a David bit of a character? Whippy. Yep, he's the first Whippy that we know of that arrived in Fiji. In the 1800s? 1830s, okay. around then. Him and his brother, David and Robert. Um, um, from? Uh, Nantucket, Massachusetts. Okay. Yep, they were whalers. And the story goes that Robert left David in Fiji. He actually got stranded on the island. But he wasn't unhappy about that. He quite liked Fiji. I see. And he quite liked the ladies. Fiji, I think, was a really nice option. I would have thought so. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's take a look at what the, your uh, DNA chart has, has thrown up. Over there. <sighs> this shows that you have ancestry from China, Mongolia, and even Japan, but not India itself. The Oceano markers reflect your Fijian and New Caledonian ancestors. And with legendary seafarers in the family, you shouldn't be surprised to see 0.5% Scandinavian touch of the Viking there. A taste of voyaging in the DNA, perhaps. And the lab have also found 913 DNA matches for you. Wow. So you're going to have to prepare to meet some of those relatives rather soon. <laughs> okay. And uh, in the meantime, Take this with you, Nicole, and keep this with you at all times because we're going to communicate via that. And, uh, well, all I can say is bon voyage. <sighs> Have a wonderful you. time. Thank I you. I think it's going to be an exciting journey. It is. <laughs> au revoir. Okay, au revoir. Bye bye. See you soon. How oh. lovely. Well, Nicole's about to find out just how Yankee Doodle Dandy her folks really were. My mother's reaction to be told there was absolutely no Indian in our family was hilarious. She, I don't actually think she believes me. I think she actually will need to see the show to believe me because she was like, what? 
yeah, qu quite a bit of disappointment, which is interesting, and a little bit of disbelief still. But sad. Look, sorry to interrupt, but I've got news that involves shopping. Aha, uh -huh. got your attention now, haven't I? You're descended from an ancestor by the name of Macy. Former whaler, Roland Hussey Macy, started a store with a red star for its logo. And that star was the tattoo he had on the back of his hand. Roland was your third cousin, five times removed, Nicole. Okay. More on that very soon, but first you have to catch a flight to America. Bring it on. Mr. Macy's star isn't the only one in the family. Head to Hollywood Boulevard and wait for instructions. Don't get too distracted by the bright lights. I need your full attention now, OK? Now, you're facing in the right direction, and I want you to take a further 10 steps forward and then look down. OK. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Humphrey Bogart. Congratulations. You've just met one of your American relatives. Well, their star. Really? <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Another 15 paces, please. Look down again. Aha, bingo. Cool. You think that's exciting? Take a little peek. Woo! Christopher Lloyd. <laughs> oh my God, he's a legend. These are all relatives connected to the whippy side of your family. That's awesome. Is that good news? I think so. Really cool, actually. Yeah. Humphrey Bogart. I think my mum will be impressed with that. And Christopher Lloyd. Yeah, obvious legend. I mean, my God, Doc from Back to the Future. I definitely feel like if I came here now, I would be able to tell people that. Would you like to come and see my uncles on Hollywood Boulevard? <laughs> DNA can connect people who are anything from third to distant cousins. Nicole is distantly related to Humphrey Bogart, Alec Baldwin, and Christopher Lloyd, all through one man. DNA matching has also found Nicole's fourth cousin, Jeanette, who knows exactly how the puzzle fits together. Jeanette. Not so much a Hollywood name. It's kind of hoping for something a little bit more glamorous, but you know, who knows? <laughs> she might be awesome. Hello, welcome to America. <laughs> Hi. My cousin. I'm Nicole. Hi, Nicole. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Jeanette. Hi, Jeanette. Such a pleasure. Please come in. Thank you. <laughs> oh, wow, look at this. Yeah, isn't it beautiful? Coming up, Nicole discovers the legacy of a relative lost overboard on the high seas while Kirk is about to discover he's got connections to the great bard himself. That is what's left of the actual Macduff Castle. Who actually did fight Macbeth. Yes. <laughs> You know, thanks to the wonders of modern science, we can take a teaspoon of saliva and we can use it to trace our family history. Now, this DNA testing is about to reveal the links that actor Kurt Torrance has to an ancient tribe along with their myths and legends that are the stuff that movies are made of. But first of all, let's see what he knows about himself so far. Yeah, we grew up in Dargaville, and uh, you know, you're Māori or you're Pākehā. If you're Pākehā, you're Dalmatian or you're English or Scot, you know, something like that. No, I grew up as a quite a sensitive kid. Well, you know, I grew up in the 70s, so staunch was just becoming a thing. If you're a sensitive kid, you know, you, you got your beans. Me and my sister uh, represented Northland in swimming. We were the first brother and sister to be in a, a Commonwealth Games team at the same time. Our first Commonwealth Games was uh, in Edinburgh in 86. My sister was actually the better swimmer. It's a big word, that word family. It's something that's a protection for you, and it's something that gives you the ability to be able to do the things that you want to do without letting your feet leave the ground. 
I reckon my DNA will tell, you know. I think it's pretty standard, actually. My mum's from Wairua, so it'll be the whole Māori thing through Raro, Tahiti maybe, dads. Scottish, so, you know, there might be a few surprises there, but I don't think there'll be too much. Ah, oh, Kirk, welcome to the DNA Ground Zero. Thank you, sir. Sit yourself down. We're about to take a journey of great excitement. <laughs> now, you've got a name, Torrance, Kirk Torrance, and that's certainly Scottish. What do you know about that side of your family? Well, I know uh, Kirk is Gaelic for church, mm -hmm. and I know that uh, the Torrance clan were just south of Glasgow. Torrances came through Dunedin, like every other Scottish person. I can't remember my grandfather, the Torrance on the Torrance side. He died when I was pretty small, uh, and I sort of vaguely remember a lot of strong Scottish-sounding women that I bumped into as a young person. Well, we've got a, a roadmap of your, your DNA around the world showing, showing <laughs> you where, where, where your forebears came from. Let's have a look at that. Are you ready? Yes. Cool. European DNA markers from your father's side there. And you also have East Asian markers. Your Polynesian ancestors migrated through Southeast Asia, Melanesia, and then into the Pacific. And you have the slightest DNA traces from Africa. Yes. Uh... That's how come I can dance. Look at that. That's three quarters of Africa. We've kept a few results up our sleeves. You'll find out about that on the road. And comparing your tests with global results has given us 915 genetic matches for you. I want you to take this, and um, and uh, and you're going to go off on your way, and we'll give you some more details. And um, happy travelling. Thank you, sir. Nice to it's meet you. It's a great team. pleasure. Bye bye. Bye bye. Well, he's going to look the part on a kilt. There's no doubt about that. But it's not the obvious heritage that's going to surprise Kirk, as we're going back thousands of years to a place he could never imagine that he'd be connected to. <laughs> Richard, Kirk, the first stop on your DNA roller coaster ride is London. <laughs> I've been to London for about 11 years, so I look forward to it. Find Big Ben, cross the river, look for a lady holding a daffodil, and you'll have found your first DNA connection. Break a leg. I have no idea what the connection is to London, really, other than Uncle came here one time as a clown when he ran away and joined the Circus of Whitehall. But, um, you know, it could be anything. Oh, there you go, the lady with the daffodil. <laughs> Hello, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Oh, Kirk, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm you Sharon. Old hands. I'm your fourth cousin. <laughs> hey! <laughs> hey, cuz. Wow. So you're Scottish? I am. That's wow. confused you, being <laughs> in London. Yeah. <laughs> so are you related on my mum's side or my dad's side? Dad's side. <laughs> yeah, nice to meet you. The DNA detectives have studied both family histories, and Kirk and Sharon's relatives had links to the villages of Fife and Dysart in the 1600s. The amount of DNA they share confirms that their families are likely to connect around three to four hundred years ago. I'm a Dalrymple. That's my son, name. Dalrymple. And you got a couple of photos there? That's my dad from the Dalrymple side. I feel like my dad, just around the um, jawline. From the DNA testing, we know we're fourth cousins. That can sometimes be a generation out. So if I'll go back, I'll go to six, seventh before that on that line, which is your dad's line and my dad's line. Back then, basically, the two main families were the Dalrymples and the Beatsons. Yeah, the Beatsons had castles and money in the family back yeah. then. I don't know what happened to it, but... <laughs> well, none came my way. <laughs> no. <laughs> and... Um, the Macduff Castle. This one, Macduff Castle. This is where the Dalrymples are from. That is what's left of the actual Macduff Castle. <laughs> Who actually did fight Macbeth. Yes. <laughs> it's amazing. I didn't do very well at school. And uh, one of the things I do remember was uh, our English teacher putting on Macbeth. And it's the only thing that I remember vividly from school. And I grew up a little bit in my early 40s, I think it was. 
I wrote a play called Flintlock Musket, and the, it, the structure of it is Macbeth, but it's set in New Zealand. Yeah, everything's so close, eh? Hey? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing's very far away. Yeah. My youngest brother's an actor. Is Got he? A cousin that's an actor. It kind of kind of runs in the family. Ah. <laughs> um, Will Starr, as it says, this is a, they are the daddy of them all in terms of accordionists. Something else from the family history. He was famous. I don't know if I was made to play, but I remember learning in the primary school and could play it. But I was sick yeah. of lugging the blooming thing home from <laughs> school heavy. every day. Yeah. Yeah, my brother um, plays the accordion, and so do all his kids. Even the little ones got a little mini accordion. This one here is my grandmother, and that's her dad. Oh. They used to have a stage act, the strong man and little Nell, and were quite regularly on stage. And even during the war, they used to um, go down to entertain the troops. Yeah. And my granny used to have to pretend to be a boy because girls weren't yeah. allowed in there. <laughs> I'm sure the creativity definitely runs. <laughs> in the family. I had a general idea about uh, the Scottish side, but you just want to know that a little bit more and puts uh, personalities to stories and little bits of colour into this big tapestry and you get to stand back and have a look and go, ah, oh, it's fascinating, you know, that this time to there, to that, to there, to this. Yeah, it's surprising how small the world is. Yeah. And how you never know who's walking behind you, no, could be your relative. You know we would have passed, <laughs> I don't know, we may have even walked past each other at some stage and not known. Yeah. One of my favourite Shakespeare plays is Macbeth. It's something that's stuck in my mind to find out that there's an actual connection there, you know, like connection running through us both. It was fantastic. Hello there, Kirk. Cousin Sharon's accent's a big hint about your next port of call. Head to the Scottish village of Dunbar because another batch of your ancestors are at the very heart of battles and feats of bravery that are going to blow your socks off. Meanwhile, Nicole's about to find out she has a White House connection or two. Oh, dear. <laughs> I'm sorry if you're a Republican, but <laughs> I'm so not. <laughs>that we were and are cousins. Yeah. The families came from the same place, Plymouth. That's where the Mayflower was. Okay, yep. And you also have Mayflower relatives. Okay, someone okay. who came over on the Mayflower. Wow. And so they were here for the first Thanksgiving. Wow. So. Far out. So this is, these are the documents here. Your ancestors were John Howland, and Elizabeth Sorry. Tilly. Thank you, wow. Oh yes, here we go, John Howland. He fell out of the boat. Howland overboard. Nicole, or shall I say hi there, Pilgrim. Your Mayflower relation, John Howland, who's also the subject of a painting by a very acclaimed maritime painter. His lineage links you to an American president, Roosevelt, not only him, Ford, Nixon, Bush Senior and Junior. Oh dear. <laughs> I'm related to Bush. I, I was gonna say, I'm sorry if you're a Republican, but <laughs> I'm so not. Wow, okay. I, I don't tell too many people. <laughs> oh no, I can't tell my husband But it, okay. it was the, the Bushes from England. Okay, good. So this is the famous painting. Howland fell overboard during a storm and was almost lost at sea, but luckily for his millions of descendants living today, today. he managed to grab hold of the topsail ha hal halyard. Halyard. <laughs> Thank you, sailor. <laughs> yeah. Giving the crew enough time to rescue him with the boat hook. He survived it. He survived that. The seas look quite unfriendly. I imagine it was, yeah, terrifying. And then... Lovely Elizabeth. Elizabeth Tilly. William 
Bradford in the falling overboard incident refers to Howland as a lusty young man. <laughs> Bit of a catch, eh, Elizabeth? Man. Yep. Wow. John Howland was the great, great, great grandfather of Nicole's Fijian relative, David Whippy. Their families were part of a Quaker community in the Massachusetts Bay Colonies, where the English pilgrims settled when they first arrived in America. There's a document of uh, 300 pages of your descendants. Whoa. <laughs> I really am related to half of America, aren't I? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yes, you are. You're American. So I'm coming out to Fiji and New Zealand. Are you I really? have been wanting to for so long. I was going to say, have you been to Fiji? <laughs> I have a whole bunch of cousins there, I You hear. do. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. You'll love Fiji. It's beautiful. I'm sure I would. You have a rich heritage. You're from the line of Mayflower. It's amazing. Yeah. And George Bush. <laughs> not that close, though, right? No, not that <laughs> not close. That close no. It was way back in England. It was way back. Way back. She was fabulous. All these stories that make you who you are, she knows them all. And now I do, you know? The Whippy family comes from Nantucket, but I would have never thought that it went as far back as the first pilgrims. It's quite overwhelming. Now it's time to head to Australia. A very close relative's waiting. They want your help to link up a long lost arm of the family. There'll be more on that once you arrive in Sydney. Actor Kirk Torrance is in Dunbar, Scotland. Now, the surname he bears is famous in these parts, but he's about to discover he's also a part of the renowned Dunbar clan. Hello, Kirk. Now, there's yet another legend in your past. You've got connections to a very fearsome soldier. A woman, yes, called Black Agnes. <laughs> so make your way to Dunbar Castle and keep an eye out for George. He may well give you the keys to the family castle. Although it's uh, just remnants now, it stood five stories high. It was never taken forcibly. If you are related to Black Agnes in 1338, she defended this castle against the English. Her husband, because Patrick, the Earl of Dunbar, was away fighting up in the north with the king. So the English had thought maybe when the, the woman is in the house, it would be easier taken, but no. She, in her own right, was very, very aristocratic. The, the lineage is there. Right. Now, none of Black Agnes's children survive, but you do connect via the niece she raised as her very own. So that makes Agnes your 21st great-grand-aunt. Are there any Dunbars left here? Not many here. After the Battle of Dunbar in 1650, the battle was lost. There was 10,000 prisoners, and they were marched down to England. Eventually, they, they were transported, and there's a famous uh, place in Massachusetts. If you go across there, they'll tell you more about the Clan Dunbar than what we yeah, can, yeah. because our history, they, they went away, and uh, they went to the, the new lands, you know, Australia, yeah. and literally to, to your own. Maybe that's where it came from, I don't know. <laughs> but that's where it is. It, they, they got dispersed all over. It was so they didn't fight again. Yeah. A lot of rebellious people in Scotland, you know. So. Yeah. They didn't want them getting their wound up again. Now, well, that's right. It's a wonderful thing to know. When you think that you have no connection to any sort of historical thing or, you know, you're so far away from everything and then you discover that 20 generations ago, you're that close to it. It doesn't take much to be connected to everything. It's a great reminder that, you know, no man is an island. I'm sure you're dying to meet a real Dunbar and we found a true clanswoman to tell you all. So prepare to travel to the Wild West, Tucson, Arizona, to be precise. Coming up, Kirk's Dunbar DNA links him to a relative whose kin got tied up with that gunfight at Tombstone, while Nicole finds a banished relative who's going to unlock a whole new family for her in Australia. Oh my God, it's so awesome. Actress Nicole Whippy found famous relatives in her distant past in America, but now she's in Sydney to meet people with much closer ties. 
a family rift had seen a branch of her family tree completely vanish, but the DNA detectives are about to change all of that. Hello, Nicole. Now head to the park near the Harbour Bridge and find this bench. There you're going to find a dossier on a relative of yours, a Mr. Henry Chamberlain Russell. It's a script. <laughs> Getting away with murder, the intriguing case of the diabolical assassin. One of the characters is Henry Chamberlain Russell, government astronomer, upper class, well-educated, well-spoken Australian. Hmm. And here's the phone. <laughs> Henry is your great great grand uncle. He was born in 1836. Relative. Henry's my relative. Okay. Head inside the observatory behind you. Your relative Gail is waiting there to tell you more about all that. Okay. <laughs> He's Australian. I had no idea that I was Australian. <laughs> I'm cool with that. Um, he's also a very highly respected astronomer from the 1800s. Hello, Henry. Hello, Nicole. Come yes. On oh, thank you. He travelled to the International Astrophotographic Congress in Paris on behalf of the Australian government. This guy is the real deal. He's like, you want to be related to him. He's awesome. Hello, Nicole. Hello. I'm Gail. Gail, yes. Nice to meet you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. And you? I'm very well. Good. Henry Chamberlain Russell. Is our relative? Yes. <laughs> My great-grandfather was his younger brother. Their father came out here as a captain of a convict ship in 1826. Oh, did he? And decided to settle here. But he was the captain of the ship. He, he was a captain. Convict. He was not a convict. On the ship. We take note of that. Yes. He then became a Member of Parliament in New South Wales. Wow. His children all had successful careers, I suppose. Henry Chamberlain probably being the most famous of them all. Mm. He had a fascination for mathematics. He got a job here at the observatory when it opened in 1858, doing scientific calculations. In 1870, he was appointed the government astronomer, a position he remained in for 33 years. He died in 1907 the same year as Frank Russell died, my great-grandfather. He wrote many scientific papers and attended conferences all over the world. He started the um, weather maps in the newspaper here in Australia. Oh, he was the wow. first to come up with that idea of publishing the weather maps in the newspaper. Really? I'm fascinated by that. I think I would have liked to have met Henry Chamberlain Russell. Mm. A very wow. fascinating man. There was an attempt on his life uh, around about 1890. Why? I don't know why. Somebody sent him a parcel bomb, but it oh. didn't go off when he opened it. But so, could you think of any reason why anyone would want to do that? Well, I'd hardly think the government astronomer would be a threat to... Uh, unless he'd upset <laughs> some other scientists, perhaps. Wow. Um, so that's, in a nutshell, Henry Chamberlain Russell. He's a pretty prestigious uh, man, yes, isn't he, in yes. Australian history? Turns out I have quite a few quite prestigious people in my family. Some Good. of them I'm, I'm more proud of than others. Yeah, I can tell you about that later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna claim him. Good. He's a smart guy. He was a very smart guy. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, a lot of the instruments here at the observatory, Henry either invented or built or imported. I'm really inspired by my ancestors. That's what I've discovered. This was Henry Chamberlain Russell's office. And knowing all this information, I'm really proud to come from that stock. It makes me feel like, you know, life is, life is bigger. I have discovered that the devilish parcel contained a, and he spells it out, B-O-M-B, -B, yes, a bomb. That one of his disgruntled staff, according to this play, um, left in his office. Please, please do not worry, I have disarmed the device and rendered it most harmless. Very smart man. The police fingered the office boy, George Faithful, for planting the bomb, which was made from blasting powder packed into a ginger beer bottle. But the case didn't stick, so it remains unsolved to this very day.
Now, Kirk's just learned that he does connect to the Dunbar clan, but what with wars, pestilence, and plague, that means Dunbar descendants are very thin on the ground in Dunbar in Scotland. So the DNA detectives have discovered a relative for him to meet in Tucson, Arizona. I'm gonna meet someone with some sort of Scottish background in the middle of desert land America. I can't believe it. Wait, somebody in the head. Hello. Hey, Kirk. Nice to meet <laughs> I'm you. Monica. I'm nice Monica Dunbar-Smith. Yeah. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I'm Monica Dunbar-Smith. My name is Kirk Torrance. And I understand that you're a Dunbar, too. Well, I've only so. just discovered that. You could almost be a little bit like a Maori. Oh, a yeah. Little, yeah. I, well, I have a lot of Native American ancestry myself on my mother's side. The other side of my family, of course, is from Scotland. But I only found this out because my, my great-grandfather's brother was a census enumerator oh. in 1880. In Tombstone. Did they know why it They did. Uh -huh. In fact, they sure did. <laughs> In fact, I'll tell you a little story about that. Yeah, you tell me. Okay. Take a seat and tell and me. I have, I have about some my pictures. cousin Wyatt. Your cousin Wyatt. Well, <laughs> I, well, actually, they were on the other side. But it started out at the Dunbar Corral. And then they went across the way over toward the OK Corral. It was never at the OK Corral. The whole battle started at the Dunbar Corral. And that was my great grandfather's corral. So that's how our family was connected into that scene at Tombstone. The rest is history, as they say. Oh, you but don't it, see that in it, that movie. It, it, but uh, to, to go a little bit for the Dunbar connection, besides the corral, mm. there, there are quite a few other Dunbar families, you know. The, the Dunbars sort of disbanded, didn't they? Once they did. They dispersed throughout the, the, the world, actually. Yeah. So that's how you ended up, your, your Dunbars ended up in New Zealand. Ours ended up in the Southwest, and people are just scattered far and wide. Yeah, almost 20 years now, I've been involved with the Dunbar clan. We were the, the first Dunbars to come back to Dunbar because there were zero Dunbars in Dunbar. We were, we were honored like long lost family. Yeah. We actually had a parade with all of our tartans <laughs> and, and, and our kilts and all of our Dunbar all paraphernalia, regalia. all of the regalia, our coat of arms. These are the colors. Wow. It's a, a very nice tartan for Christmas time. <laughs> Red and green. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. So there it is. The Dunbars were a very, very powerful family. The Dunbars were were not a, a clan initially. They were a royal family. One of the Dunbars. So, wait, sorry. Say that again. Uh, what? They were a royal family. Oh, just they were one known more as time. a royal Say it again. <laughs> a royal family, <laughs> and they were descendants from Crinan the Thane. The Thane means the king. Crinan the king was one of the first of this line of people that ended up becoming Dunbars. But one of the ancestors also of the Dunbars was uh, Margaret, Saint Margaret, oh, queen, Saint. queen of Scotland. She was a Dunbar, yes. So it's a very powerful family. We're distinctive. <laughs> yeah, see, no mucking around with us. No, no, we won't have that. <laughs> yeah, no. Amazing, thank you, here's a hug. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. There you go. Hey. Nice. She had a great amount of knowledge that she wanted to share about the Dunbar family, which was fantastic. She was almost like, you know, those born again Maori. She was like a born again Dunbar. <laughs> she had all this stuff to, to want to convert me with. She didn't have to talk too hard because I was totally there. And she just seemed a very open hearted and generous woman. It's been quite a ride following your father's dramatic DNA, but now you're heading back thousands of years thanks to your mother. Head to where the Lone Ranger was filmed and all will become clear. Kirk's DNA has tiny traces from his mother's ancient ancestors who were part of the B. Hapler group. His mother's clan lived in Asia, but they had a bit of a taste for travel and the warmer climes of the Pacific seemed to appeal to some of them, so they headed out that way. While others, put on their woolies, toughed it out, and went through Siberia and onto America, which is how modern-day Native Americans and Polynesians come to be distant relations. Coming up, Kirk is about to find an ancestral stomping ground in the middle of Navajo country, while Nicole learns the full story about a relative who was disowned by the family. Oh, my God. These guys have been my mum and they've yes. been searching for. Yes. 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 Uh, 
I never thought that I'd end up in a desert. Never. This is an amazing place. This vista opens up towards you and you think, holy haka. Yeah, it does stir up a little bit of something in you. Hello, Kirk. Now, if you're wondering why you're in Monument Valley, it's because ancient DNA connections link the Navajo to Polynesian cultures. So if you head west, you should bump into John. 93% of his DNA is East Asian and Native American, so he knows the songs of the past. For us Navajos, we came about this area around about 1500. We came from Asia, they say. Went across a Bering Strait into Alaska, Canada, here. Some even went further down south from here. They call us the nomadic people, people that never settled, always moving. Polynesians moved about quite a lot too, you know, except that we did it in an ocean. The body has given to you just for a little while. At one time when you were born, you step your bare foot on this ground, you made your mark there, and that's how this Mother Earth recognized. The Earth for us is called Papa Tūnuku. It's the female, and the sky is called Rangi Nui, and that's the father. In between, they lay so close together, the children are in darkness the whole time. And then one of the sons called Tane pushed them apart and created light and made the world and stuff. Lots of similarities, eh? The interesting thing about meeting John, um, so he is someone who was born and bred desert. It's just seeing him so part of it. He's like this tutu desert guy. I'm Polynesian, and I feel like I'm this tutu ocean guy. And um, the passion is the same. Valuable thing to Māori was a stone called Ponamu. So this is a piece of Ponamu. Um, we got a piece of Ponamu for you. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's quite important to us. So it's from the South Island of New Zealand. Wow. This is awesome. Thank you. We do this thing called, it's called a hungi. Ah, oh, OK. Yeah. You want to try that? Want to try a hungi, bro? OK. Come. I'm coming, forehead, nose, touch. Yeah. Ah. So we shed breath. Oh, I see, so I see. Connected. I never done this before. So you're a hongi virgin. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just deflowered your hongi, bro. Yeah, and you're the opposite of mine. <laughs> yeah, I'm a hongi slut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. I don't know. Trish, let's go get a coffee. Everybody wants to know where we come from and uh, who we're related to and, and how. Everyone's interested in the whakapapa, but to know it, Thousands of years ago, back to the Navajo stuff, finding that you related to this magical place. That's the fascinating stuff. If you can travel back in time with this DNA technology, you know, it's a fascinating trip. It's pretty special. The DNA detectives have found a whole branch of Nicole Whippy's family in Australia. A family rift had seen them fall off the family tree, but all that's about to change. Hello, good morning. Look, follow this map, and you'll find a man named Trevor Watson waiting for you. He wants you to help him heal a rift created when your great-grandmother was publicly outcast from New Caledonia, just for following her heart. <sighs> this must have something to do with my great-grandmother, Melanie Soulard. Uh, she had an affair with my great-grandfather, Eugene Janae, and they had to flee to Fiji. My mum and her sisters have been back to New Caledonia, tried to make contact with the Salah family, but they've never really had any luck. Hi. I am. I'm really nervous. Hi, Nicole. Hi. I'm Trevor Watson. Hi, Trevor Watson. Cousins Helen and Hi, Louise. Hi, Helen. Nice oh. to meet you. Yeah, we are DNA-related. Oh, Yay. Great. Fantastic. Let's go. Should we go in? Yeah. Nicole's great-grandmother, Melanie Soulard, was married to a man named Harry Watson, and Trevor and his family are descended from their children, while Nicole is descended from Melanie and Eugène Genet's children. Yeah, so that's Harry Watson as a younger man. Oh, mm. yeah. Yes. Yep. They had three children in New Caledonia. Before Melanie and Eugène eloped, 
There was a 20-year age difference between Harry and Melanie. Mm. Mm. And maybe Melanie wanted a bit more of a life than what he was able to give her. I, I thought so it maybe, works out yeah. that your mother and myself would be on the same plane, granddaughters of Melanie. Melanie. Oh, wow, yeah. that's Melanie. amazing. All You're all the same cousins. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. My mum went back to New Caledonia with her sisters yes. because they're trying to find out more about Melanie oh. and her family. They've had a lot of trouble. And they just have come up against walls. Walls, yes. Yeah. Melanie was ostracised by the families. They didn't want to know anything That's about it. Yeah. No, that was a disgrace that she brought on a family. Here we have Harry and Melanie. Wow. I think this is the first photo I've ever seen of her. So she is my great 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 grandmother. Yes. Oh my god. That's so awesome. Why have I never seen photos of her? Melanie would have been the Catholic. Catholic yeah. Where divorce really would have been a no no. It's Melanie as a younger. Oh. Wow. That is incredible. I didn't yeah. never see her. Well. My mother wouldn't talk about is it all? Because as far as my mother was concerned, she left the family. William, Harry and Emma. And Emma. Emma's my so mother. And Emma's your mum. Yeah. So my nan sitting the mm. little girl. They were the three children that she, that left. she left behind. We wonder how a mother could leave I know. children. Yeah. I know. But it being a mother. Yeah. I know. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. These are amazing. Oh, sorry. Quite emotional. Yeah. Just seeing her, and I feel really sorry for her. It was always such a romantic idea in my head that she'd fallen in love with someone else. I didn't even consider that she'd left three kids. No, <laughs> no, 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 that you no, would. No. When I said, oh, wouldn't it be lovely to go to New Caledonia? My mother said to me, oh, Helen, look, I'd leave just well alone. She didn't want me to be yeah. hurt yeah. by yeah. the Soulards in case they didn't um, accept me. But I've been to New Caledonia. And they were very welcoming with me and they contact me still. And This is what so, these guys have been, my mum and they've yeah. been searching for. Very exciting for us as well because we, we, didn't, we didn't, know didn't know anything about, about the New Zealand Fiji <laughs> inside all at we all. we knew was Melanie yeah. went to, to Fiji yeah. or Tahiti and not a great deal was known. Oh, that's so amazing. It's a jigsaw, it makes it exciting. It so, you're, yes. so you're on Melanie's side, Stephen Timmons was a convict. Uh, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> so these are all Australian people that you're all DNA related I to. I know. Yeah. I mean, this whole DNA thing, you know, that this is how we've connected up. This is the science of it. It's just like a key that's opened a door. I just feel like the whole world's about to open up for a lot of people, not just me. The last conversation I've just had with my cousin, Louise, who actually is my cousin, which is so cool, um, was that uh, one of the Solards in New Caledonia went to Suva, Fiji just recently trying to track down us. So that's pretty cool. I know that for my mother's family, it's, it's a pretty big thing. I, I wish I could meet Melanie Solard and ask her what happened. She was a real survivor, that's what's come out of this. But it's kind of like in our blood. What comes across with my ancestors is how brave and courageous they were. They weren't afraid of the world. They just did it all in a time where it, that wasn't easy. So obviously John Howland came on the Mayflower, one of the reasons why I'm related to half of America. Henry Chamberlain Russell, the esteemed astronomer. I'm really, just really proud of them. And just being able to pass on those stories now to my daughters, I mean, they live on. Following marker connections can lead us to surprising places and family long lost to us. The DNA Detectives is proving that we all have a cocktail coursing through our veins, and yet it's just a matter of deconstructing the recipe. So why don't you join us to see who's going to be curious enough to take the test next week?